Hi guys, in this video we're going to introduce complex ions, look at common ligands, look at monodentate and polydentate ligands, octahedral complexes, shapes of ions with fourfold coordination, and then finally we're going to summarise. So we're going to meet a lot of new terms in this video, the first of which is complex ions. Well, what is a complex ion? It's formed when a transition metal is present in a solution as part of a compound. The complex ion is a central metal ion, a transition metal ion, surrounded by ligands. We'll get to what ligands are in just a second, but for now, a complex ion is a transition metal, like cobalt, an atom of that, surrounded by these ligands, which in this case are water. But there are other chemicals that can act as ligands in solutions. So what is a ligand? Well, a ligand is a molecule which can donate a pair of lone electrons to a metal ion and form a dative covalent bond. Remember, a dative covalent bond is where we have a covalent bond between two atoms, but one of the atoms provides both of the electrons for the pair. When we're talking about transition metal chemistry, we're more likely to refer to these dative covalent bonds as coordinate bonds. So now we can fully describe a complex ion. It's a central transition metal ion surrounded by these ligands, which in this case are water, and they donate these lone electrons to the metal ion to form covalent bonds, which we call coordinate bonds because the ligand provides both electrons. When cobalt salts dissolve in water, the complex ion formed is cobalt, CO, and then in brackets we show the ligand and how many of them there are, six, and then the square brackets here indicate that it's a complex ion and we show the charge outside the brackets. So just to break that down again, we often show complex ions in notation like this. We have the central metal ion, which is cobalt. We have the ligands showing their lone pairs, which in this case are the H2O molecules. And the arrows pointing inwards show that it is a dative covalent bond or a coordinate bond. We have these square brackets to show that it is a complex ion and the charge is shown outside the brackets in the top right hand corner. Another term we must understand is coordination number. This is the number of coordinate or dative covalent bonds to the metal ion. So in this example above we have one, two, three, four, five, six dative covalent bonds. So this complex has a coordination number of six. Points to note about the iron that we've already talked about are the square brackets which mark it out as a complex iron and the charge shown outside of these square brackets. Water is uncharged and so in the example of cobalt above, the cobalt has a 2 plus charge and this gives the overall charge to the complex iron because there's no contribution from the water. When we look at some other things that can form ligands, the common feature that makes all of them ligands is that they have at least one lone pair of electrons per molecule in their outer energy level. So we've already seen water in the previous examples acting as a ligand, but ammonia also has a lone pair. These two, water and ammonia, are similar sizes and they're both neutral. Some other common ligands are thiocyanate, SCN minus, cyanide, chloride and hydroxide, all of which have a negative charge and as we'll look at more in the future, chloride is bigger than water or ammonia. We can divide ligands into different categories. Monodentate ligands can donate just one lone pair of electrons and form one coordinate bond. In fact, the dentate part of monodentate comes from the Latin of tooth or to bite, and mono means one. So monodentate would have originally meant one bite, which is showing that they only attach in one place. H2O is a good example of a monodentate ligand, and you can see here that the oxygen only donates one lone pair per molecule of water that bonds. Bidentate ligands have two pairs of electrons they can donate to form 
coordinate bonds with the central metal iron. These electrons come from different atoms within the ligands. The types of molecules that form bidentate ligands, so more than one covalent, dative covalent bond, you won't have come across so commonly in chemistry. The most common example of a bidentate ligand is ethane 1,2-diamine, which we often refer to for ease as just EM when we're drawing out complexes. So we have two CH2 groups in the middle and then two NH2 groups on the end, and it's on these that we have the lone pairs of electrons for donating to form the coordinate bonds. As well as bidentate ligands, we have more polydentate ligands. Poly means many, remember. And an example of a polydentate ligand is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, EDTA. This is multidentate because it can form more than one bond. So you could include bidentate and multidentate. Specifically, it's a hexadentate ligand, hexa, meaning that it can bond six times from one molecule to the central metal iron. The EDTA is present as EDTA4- in the solutions, and the complex iron have six lone pairs to make these bond. The six lone pairs are located here, and on all four other oxygens, which are present as carboxylic acids, which have lost their hydrogen, leaving it with a one minus charge. And then we also have lone pairs on the two nitrogen atoms you see at the ends of the molecule here. And it's these six locations of lone pair that bond onto the central metal iron to form the complex. EDTA is useful to bind metal ions in solution, which decreases their concentration. It's known as a chelating agent. More uses of EDTA are in detergents used for washing and cleaning, foods and medical applications. This video is getting quite long, so we're going to split it into a couple. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.